In this tutorial, I will explain the concept of recursive programming using MATLAB. What I want you to achieve after finishing this lecture is number one, understand what is meant by recursion in programming. Number two, see and understand an example of recursion programming. I want also to remind you that if you have any question regarding this lecture or any other lecture, post it on the discussion board. So let's get started. As I've explained in the function tutorial, the way to define a function in MATLAB is by creating a new M file and use the function syntax. Then we define the output, which is in this case, f equals to function name, for example, fact, then the input n. After that type the mathematical relation between the input and the output, which in this case, f equals to product of one, two, n. Then the end statement. As I have explained, this function is used to find the factorial of a positive number. This is the simplest way to construct a function in MATLAB. This function will solve a given problem, which is finding the factorial of a number directly. In recursion programming, the concept of solving problems is different. We will have a given problem and the solution to this problem depends on the solution of smaller versions to the same problem. Which means, if we know the solution to n minus 1 problem, we can use a simple formula to calculate the solution to n problem. To make everything clear, I will consider the problem of finding the factorial of a certain number. In mathematics, we can define the factorial problem as follow. We start by setting a base, which is factorial of 0 equals to 1. Factorial of 1 equals to 1. Factorial of 2 equals to 2 times 1 equals to 2. Factorial of 3 equals to 3 times 2 times 1 equals to 6, and so on. From that, we can conclude a definition for the factorial. n factorial equals to product of n times n minus 1, and so on, until 2 times 1. And actually, this definition allowed us to introduce another definition for the factorial problem, which is the factorial of a certain number equals to 1 if this number is equal to 0. We call this a base. And equals to n times n minus 1 factorial if n is bigger than 0. This is the recursive definition of the factorial problem. We will solve the factorial problem by solving the small versions of the same problem. And this is will be possible thanks to this definition, factorial of zero equals to one, which we call the base. Now, I want to show you three different ways to solve the factorial problem using MATLAB. Number one, by using the for loop. So I have defined function and I call it fact zero. This function takes n, which is a positive integer, and returns a factorial of n. I have defined f equals to 1, and then by using a for loop from i equals to 1 until i equals to n with a step of 1, f equals to f times i, end. The second way which I've discussed in the function tutorial and also at the beginning of this tutorial is by using the product function. The third way is by using recursive function. So I have defined a function fact one. The input to this function is n and the output of this function is f. I will use an f statement as follow. If n equals to zero, the factorial f equals to one. Again, this is what we call the base. Else, which means if n equals to any other number, the factorial f equals to n times fact one of n minus one. In this line, as you can see, I am repeating or reusing the function fact one to solve the problem of factorial n minus one. Let's see exactly what will happen if we call this function fact one. Consider the problem of finding six factorial. Six factorial is the main problem. This problem will be solved using fact one function. And the solution to this problem is based on the solutions of small problems using the same function fact one. So sex factorial can be written as sex times 
5 factorial and now I have transformed the main problem 6 factorial to another problem 6 times 5 factorial and I need to solve the new problem 5 factorial using the same function fact1. 5 factorial equals to 5 times 4 factorial. So again, I need to solve the problem or the small problem 4 factorial. 4 factorial equals to 4 times 3 factorial. Keep moving. 3 factorial equals to 3 times 2 factorial. So the new problem is 2 factorial. 2 factorial equals 2, 2 times 1 factorial. 1 factorial, which is a new problem, equals to 1 times 0 factorial. 0 factorial is a base, and I know the answer of the base, which is 0 factorial equals to 1. So again, you can think about it in this way. At each step, I didn't know the solution of these factorials. From the beginning, I didn't know the solution of the main problem 6 factorial. And by moving down, I didn't also know the solutions of 5 factorial, 4 factorial, 3 factorial, 2 factorial, 1 factorial. Until I reach to the base, which is 0 factorial, and which has a solution of 1. Then the solution of all factorials now can be completed until we reach to the solution of the main problem, which is 6 factorial. If you are asking now, is this function fact1 keep calling and repeating itself, then the answer is yes. And I will show you that in MATLAB by adding these two lines. I will display n at the start and at the end of the function. So I will use this line, display of start, comma, space, number to string of n, and again the same line at the end of this function, but I will replace start with end. Now let's use this function. For example, fact1 of 3. Let's examine the answer. First of all, n equals to 3, so I will pass the f condition and go to else condition f equals to 3 times fact 1 of 3 minus 1, which is 2. I don't know the answer of fact 3 minus 1, so this is a new argument of fact 1 function. So again, recall the function, fact 1, use n equals to 2. Since n equals to 2, I will pass the f condition and go to else condition. f equals to 2 times fact of 2 minus 1, which is 1. Again, I don't know the answer of factorial 1. So the new argument of fact1 function is 1. I will pass the f condition and go to else condition. f equals to 1 times fact of 1 minus 1, which is 0. Now the fact1 new argument is 0, which satisfies f statement condition. The answer is f equals to 1. So after knowing the answer of the problem of factorial 0, which is 1, I can get back to the problem factorial 1, which is 1 times fact of 0. So the solution of this problem is 1 times 1 equals to 1. And now I can also move to the problem of factorial of 2, which is 2 times fact of 1. The answer is 2 times 1 equals to 2. And since I use a solution of factorial of 2 problem, I can move to the main problem, which is factorial of 3, equals to 3 times 2 factorial. The answer is 3 times 2 equals to 6. So the main problem factorial of 3 was solved by solving small versions of the same problem, which is the factorial problem.